Three fundamental tools to boost up your audition game. Three instruments, three little techniques that will help you tremendously to come across as an even better actor, as a greater professional, as a more credible, authentic and genuine character. Welcome back to the Coach MC Studio. My name is Lorenzo. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks so much for clicking that button and joining the channel once again. And today we're talking about one of the things that we kind of tend to overlook, that we take for granted, that are so fundamental though, to becoming a better actor, to be more credible, to have more impact in front of the camera. So how we work with the camera, how we move in front of the camera, and how we take some clear, concise decisions about where the character wants to go in front of the camera. So stick with me and let's see what's cooking. You see that? That's tip number one. What am I doing? I'm just watching. I'm just looking at you guys right now, deep down inside of the lens, hitting the sensor, transforming the information of the light coming in and the sensor into a picture. It's the eyes, the look, the stare that you have as a character. The eyes are everything. They are the gateway to your soul. There are everything in entertainment industry. You can have an ugly face or a distorted, strange, weird looking body and not being beautiful at all. But if your eyes work, if they transport energy, emotions, feelings, thoughts, and precision, direction, tension, then you have captured the essence of being an actor in front of the camera. It's the eyes. If you open up the eyes and let the audience in, they can project everything onto you, onto your character, into your eyes, trying to interpret what you look is really telling, what's going on inside of yourself. And of course, this isn't a staring contest. Michael Caine said it beautifully in acting and film, not to twinkle too often, not to move the eyes too often and too rapidly and too hasty. That means that your character is strong, that it has fundaments, that your character is in charge, that he's controlling. Even if you are playing a low status character, even if your character is frightening and in a low status position and not the protagonist of the movie, of the script, still your eyes, they transport everything. You need to keep that contact. So my tip number one is to really exercise that craft of staring, of watching, of looking deeply, of letting people in into your life and not being afraid of letting them in, of letting them interpret your view, your glance, your staring, your observing the other people. Your eyes are the first portal to your success, the first gateway. For the audience, your eyes are like the gatekeeper, the bouncer in front of the club who's standing in front of the club. Because depending on how you look, on how you look like literally, on how you are looking at people, they will decide whether they like you or not whether they find you interesting or not, whether your story has something interesting to tell. So again, whether you're low status or you're high status, your eyes are telling a compelling story. Let people in into your eyes and exercise this technique first and foremost, because your body can move, it can be hinged over, it can be slightly looking and facing somewhere else or telling another story. Whatever your language does, right? The content, what, whatever the author has given you as speech, whatever the monologue is actually saying, whatever your lines are that, you are that you're looking at during the audition, right? The eyes tell the story. So exercise telling a story with your eyes. How do you feel? Are you melancholic today? Are you frightened? Are you aggressive? Are you contemplating? Are you thinking? The eyes will tell what's going on. It's show, not tell. It's show business, not tell business. It's a very technical class instead of the usual stuff that I'm recording for you, which is more inspirational, more thoughtful, and more philosophical, and more about general tools that you can use. Today, we're, we're getting to the nitty gritty, to the essence of now we're shooting. So what am I supposed to do? If I lose my mind, if I lose my lines, if, if today is not my day, at least I can rely on my eyes. I can rely on what my look is telling. Some actors just made a career because of the way they were looking. And I'm not trying to diminish a career of Henry Fonda or Charles Bronson or all these great actors from the past, but 
they really heavily relied on their look. And that is okay, that is a legitimate thing to do. Or Michael Caine, think about Michael Caine. You wouldn't say Michael Caine is uh, the most body intuitive actor out there, right? He's not somebody who is known for great athleticism or action movies. Nonetheless, he played an incredible variety of, of different roles engaging in all sorts of characters because he was always believable. And the first truth that he was you know, giving out, he was impacting the audience heavily with his look, with his glance, with his stare, with his, the way he was watching and observing, the way he was constantly progressing and not twinkling too much. And having that relaxed stare, your eyes can tell so much. Camera acting goes through the eyes. The camera is flirting with your eyes, with yourself, with you as a character. So flirt back. Nowadays, I feel like people have lost that ability to flirt. Everything is so functional. Let's get there slowly. Take your time. Approach this like a loving relationship. You have to wow for the interest of the camera, of the lens, of the sensor of this optical display that is catching every nuance and every detail of your face, of your mimical expression. And the eyes are the most potent messenger out there. What do we observe when we are not sure if our counterpart is lying or if he's, you know, generally speaking, telling the truth or if we can't believe this incredible story? What are we searching for first? We are searching for any glimpse in the eyes, right? We're searching for the truth. The eyes tell us if, if the other person, if the counterpart is telling the truth or not. If something sounds too good to be true, where, where, where do we check that? We observe the eyes because the eyes usually are telling what's going on. And vice versa, if the eyes are, are hiding all the time and deflecting and, and not looking, then that's a different story. When you sit there or when you stand there during your audition, Make sure to know exactly how your eyes are functioning, how they're working, what they are transmitting. Observe yourself. This is something you can do on a, on a daily basis. It costs no money and you can implement it right away after this video, after watching this video. Just look into the mirror and look and observe and try to understand what, what kind of emotions do I get from this look or that look. Is he truthful? Is this character for real? Is she meaning what she's saying or is she hiding something? Is there a deeper meaning to that? It's, it's all there. Before we speak and we are so obsessed about speaking and telling and showing with all the instruments that our body has given us, let's try to reduce everything to just that part here, just to that rectangular, beautiful, Technicolor 70 millimeter frame, right? Let's let's try to focus down like a laser everything sharply and condense everything to this rectangular space here. It's the eyes before the body and the language and the, the word telling what's going on inside of the character. Even if the character is hiding something, you still can look at the counterpart, right? You still want to deflect that and you can do that by saying something, but by meaning something else in the eyes show whether one or the other fact is true. So acting tip number one, exercise your eyes. And there are some, some great like exercises, physical exercises you can do with your eyes. You would be surprised, it's still a muscle. It belongs to a face that is embedded in facial muscles. So you can exercise your eyes of doing all sorts of weird movements and twitches and twings and try to really kind of push your boundaries of what your eyes can do mimically and what you can transport. And if you believe yourself when you're looking into that mirror or looking into that lens or have some friends or some family, some company, people who know you come in and watch your reels or just have a dialogue with them and let them see what's going on in your eyes and let them judge and let them tell you like, this doesn't feel real. You can exercise this right away after this video. What is your look precisely saying? Are your eyes really telling what's going on inside of your character? Or are they telling a different story opposed to what they are supposed to tell? If that makes sense to you guys, please let me know in the comment section below because this is truly fundamental stuff. Never have your eyes be worried or weary or tired as much as you can like have a fresh look and a fresh start into the day when you're auditioning, be there, act it proactively, open. Because if you open up your eyes, you're letting also emotions in. You're not just letting emotions out, you're also opening up for the counterpart. So you are way more effective about what the reader, about what the casting director, about what the director is telling you, what you're saying to you, if you let it in, instead of deflecting it or closing down. If your eyes are not proactive, if they're not part, integral part of the reading process, then you won't 
admit yourself to absorb all the informations, conscious informations, also subliminal informations. Because if you have your eyes wide open, you're getting in all the information. You're also catching and getting some nuances. Otherwise, you would have missed. And sometimes that subliminal message that you're receiving, that transmission, that is sometimes the key detail that kind of tips your addition towards success. That is sometimes that missing little thing, that nuance, that spark that makes the whole thing stand out. Okay, acting tip number two to step up your audition game in a remarkable way. It's the most overlooked piece of furniture, the most overlooked object in the casting director's office. Something that we take for so granted that we don't pay any attention to it. Even though it could be the window to another universe. I'm talking about the importance of the chair and how we should properly sit as actors. How we should sit down and how we should place our bodies once we're seated in order to be flexible and, and still open to any type of suggestions, impulses, reactions and open to all types of solutions in order to move my body even with small little movements, little actions and still be very impactful for the camera. So first of all, this is one of the most overlooked objects because everybody takes the chair for granted. But the chair is way more than just the chair. Sometimes it's the only object standing in the casting director's office or even in the scene. And it's one of the most difficult things just to sit on a chair, just to approach the chair. There is another thing. The chair when we're auditioning is not just a chair. It could be the shoulders of the person we are massaging in the scene, right? We're massaging the, the shoulders of that outer character we're having the scene with. And I was like, you, do you like that? Huh? Is that good? Oh, oh I feel oh, that's stiff. Oh. You see, the chair becomes, you know, the shoulder pack of another human being. Sometimes the chair can be the window. You're looking out, you're gazing out. When you have big dreams in a scene and you're imagining an, another future, bright and beautiful and colorful future, and you want to get out of where you're living right now, you want to get out of your current situation and you're imagining something new and exciting, the chair can be that window. Don't take the chair for granted. It can be another human being. It can be a window to another universe. It can be the car you're seated in. It can be the desk. It can be a bar, you know, in the middle of the night where you have a drink with, with, with another character where you're having the scene that plays in the middle of the night in this bar. And, and then all of a sudden the chair becomes the bar. And here's the bartender, there's the other actor, there's the person you're talking to. All of a sudden this is very dynamic, very natural, very organic, without any big action. Because again, you have a great point of force, you're using the chair. You know, achieve something, you're fighting against yourself and you're having this monologue. There's no one else in the scene involved. Maybe the chair becomes the thing that you would love to strangle or kind of where you kind of deflect your force upon, your energy upon, because you're, you know, you, this is the way you're struggling and you're showing that with this action. Don't take the chair for granted. It's not just an object. It's not just a piece of furniture. It's your best friend inside of the casting director's office. Another thing is how we sit down, how actors should sit down, right? Let's call it that way. There is a clumsy, stupid way of sitting down. Well, I have to tell you something, but I when you start the scene. It is clumsy because I don't show anything. I just fall out of the frame. People probably would have some difficulties of following me with the camera so they will lose me out of the frame. That won't look good and won't look professional. But if I have something very important to say, you know, I just wanted to confess something. Yesterday, I made this absurd discovery, you know, to one of my closest friends and he kind of told me that now you're using the chair, you see, you, it was a natural kind of shift from being high status to confessing something and becoming low status and I was using the chair to kind of display that transition and I was never losing touch with the camera, never losing sight of where the lens is. Once you are seated in the chair, make sure to, to sit in the front third of the chair and not completely relaxed in the back of the chair because like this you're dumbing down your energy you're plummeting down your energy it's kind of your you know your energy goes into the chair it doesn't stay with your body so sit a little bit up front like in the last third of the chair so you have some space left here with your back and the shoulder rest and the back rest of the chair so there's some space here so you have to be you know sitting erected 
So you're here, you're in control, the energy stays with, with your body, with yourself, instead of deflecting it into the chair. And once you're seated in this last space, in this last area of the chair, and you have some, some space left from, you know, from, from the back of the chair to your body, now you're free. Now you can deliberately move. Now you can add some very easy dynamics that will kind of enhance your performance, underline a concept, or kind of accentuate something that is truly important to the content of the scene. Whether you are interested, whether you're deflecting, whether you're kind of dealing with yourself, whether you're moving around between two characters, it all can be done very easily once you have control of the chair. Once you took control of your space, you're sitting comfortable, but not really relaxed, just comfortable where you are, clearly seeing everything. It's kind of like this watchtower. Uh, you're overlooking the scenery, but you're still part of the scenery and you can move easily. And how do you move when you're seated in a chair? You move not with your hips, not with your shoulders, not with your head alone, you move with your waistline. So your hips will always face the audience, but your waistline moves from one camera angle to the other, just up here and your head follows automatically. Now, what you can do is even, if you wanna add some extra spice, you can look here, but move there. You can listen to this guy, but your body tells another story. So you can change angles and directions, kind of, you know, give some dynamic to the body or emphasize a certain, you know, subconscious subliminal concept of what the character likes or what the character is attracted to or not. If you're sitting in front of the camera and just facing the camera, you have your waistline free. You can also, you know, add some little movements like taking something, placing something here. It's like, do you want something? Hey, this is really nice. Thank you so much. Have I told you the story? Like, ah, oh, yeah, you know the story as well. You see, my, just my waistline is moving. Right here, I create the dynamic. My hips are facing the audience. Every other part of my body stands still and is relaxed. So I have control over my diaphragm. My, my voice comes out clearly. I have enough resonance. My sound sounds good. My voice sounds good. I have enough space and room and oxygen. At the same time, I'm not lacking any dynamic, any movement. I can do this easily without leaving trace of the camera, without leaving the track of the lens. What are you saying? Oh yeah, I heard that. That's a pretty funny story. Yeah, thank you so much. You know what? Now it's time to leave. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you guys. And now you're standing up again and you're not leaving again. You're not standing up in a clumsy, fast, hasty way. You're maneuvering, you're controlling everything. Again, this is the chair. It's time to go. Thank you so much for this evening. I hope you enjoyed the performance. Does that make sense? Your chair is your best friend. You're pivoting around your waistline. Your eye contact is always clear, is always proactive. You're not hiding, you're not hunching, you're not looking away, you're not deflecting. You're open to suggestions, open to directions, open to your instincts and to the intuition that is telling you, maybe I should look this way now. Maybe I'm more interested in what he's saying. Maybe I look just back. All right, I take that in. Now I look to him and now I'm here. Like a fan, I can open up and close down every time I want without too much of an exercise, too much of a haste going on, too much of movement or, or any force involved. It's very easy, very relaxed. Nonetheless, I'm in control. I'm overseeing the scenery and I'm part of this chair. When we're talking about auditioning, we're on very close frames sometimes, but also in the movie theater, sometimes it's, it's gigantic, right? And every little movement that you're displaying becomes very big on that, on that huge screen. So if you're moving a lot because you have to compensate for your wrong sitting position, it kind of looks shaky and hasty and insecure at the end on that big screen. You want to be there and safe and secure, even if you're playing low status, even more so if you're playing low status and not in control of the scene. Still you can hunt, still you can, you can be low status and, and, and be unsecure or, or trying to ask for something and wait for the response and hopefully it's positive, right? And then you're doubting with yourself and you're looking over your shoulder and still you can move, but it's all happening here through the waistline, through the space that you have left, through the control of your seating position, through where you place yourself with your body onto that chair. The chair is your best friend. It will help you to magnify, to boost your audition, your, your performance on stage or in front of the camera in tremendous ways. Try to make sure to really incorporate this very, very usual and contemporary object that we all have 
at some point in, in our lives at home, right? In some way, in some style, in some form, everybody possesses at least one piece of, of furniture that's called a chair, right? Everybody has a chair, so that's something you can really, really exercise for yourself in a very easy uh, way, right away, implement it right away and it will help you tremendously to perform better on stage. It will take also away some nervosity because once you see a chair in a room, you know exactly, ah, oh, this is my point of force. This is an emotional anchor. This I can use in trillions of different ways. People, they don't even imagine what I can do with a chair. You have to exercise it though. You have to be safe about that and sure about your movements on the chair. That's your homework. That's your mission at home. So once you get into the audition room, you can do millions of crazy different things with that chair and how you position yourself and how your movement looks and where you want to look with your eyes, where your direction goes without losing touch with the audience, without losing energy, without collapsing and imploding in the process and always being reachable and available for everyone else. Let's go to tip number three. Make a difference by making a decision. Take a leap of faith, believe in your product and make a strong decision. You know, the thing is, if you are playing your own game and you are different, in the beginning everybody will laugh at you because you are not swimming with the stream, because you're doing something else. And everybody will blame you, it's like, what, you're, what are you doing? This is not our style, this is not how it's supposed to be done and, and so on and so forth. But you will laugh back at them at a certain point because they're all playing it just safe and they're just playing the boring game that everybody else is playing just to be an acceptable part of the mass. But being an acceptable part of the mass doesn't sound like great quality when it comes to entertainment. When it comes down to entertainment, you want to be outstanding. You want to blow people away. You want to show your magnificent talent and, and all the incredible amount of work that you've put into in, in creating that character and building your craft and, and fortifying your skill. Being an actor means sometimes to make a courageous decision. Sometimes we move from one city to the other. Sometimes we accept roles we shouldn't accept because they're really not what we are used to play. And then suddenly, yo, we discover something great about ourselves by interpreting something completely new. Sometimes it's about using a language that you're not acquainted with. We have to make a lot of very strong and courageous decisions throughout our career in order to get noticed. If you're always playing it safe and you don't make any strong and important decisions for your character, for that moment where you came from and what kind of environment you're finding yourself, if you like what you're perceiving, if you like your character, if you like your counterpart, all these things, how you feel. Usually when I ask actors like, how do you feel when you start this scene? And, and usually the answer is like, I'm not sure. Or I feel worried about what? About the situation and how does that affect you? Well, it kind of, you know, it's, it's depressing. Yeah, and then why don't you show that? Be depressed. Yeah, but if I'm depressed during the scene, it won't be interesting. No, it will be interesting as long as you believe in it and you stick to that program and you really kind of dive into that depression and you kind of explore all the boundaries of the depression of that character, then it becomes real and tangible and authentic and then it's important, then it's a great performance. Whether or not that perfectly fits into the script or not is not the point of you know going to the audition. It's showing what you got inside of yourself and where your craft is in this very moment in time. And that means that you have to make some important decisions. Are you happy in that scene as a character? Does your mood change all of a sudden in that scene? Display those changes strongly, show them separately, make them bold, make them big, make them sharp. We have to kind of precisely perceive how that character feels. If a character is interesting, the story can be sometimes secondary. If the character is strong enough and, and important enough and, and believable enough, then the story yeah, it is great and important to have a, a, a beautiful story kind of supporting the character's evolution. But the character itself is what we're attached to, not so much to the story. Sometimes great movie stories don't make sense or are overly complicated or are sometimes even banal. But the characters in that story are so great and so important and so outstanding. And they have all made strong and very important decisions that you kind of follow them because you want to know how this is going to end. Every time somebody steps up and makes an important decision, we are almost forced to listen to this person. Whether or not we like it or not, that's written on a second sheet of paper. 
But the first impact is made by taking a bold and courageous move. Sometimes little things, sometimes big things, but you have to make those decisions and stick to them. Not leaving the ballpark immediately as soon as you got a few strikes just because you know your whole game theory is not working right from the start. Well, then adjust and then compensate and put the right players onto the field and then you will see you can turn this game around and, and bring it home. Make outstanding decisions about your character. Where is he from? Where is he going? What's his current mood? What's the purpose of your character being in that scene? And it can be exaggerated, it can be out outrageous sometimes. It can be senseless from the spectator's point of view in the beginning and then at the end it makes total sense because you showed them how you got there by playing the arc. But you had figured out something previously for yourself that was totally in tune what you were desiring to obtain out of that audition, out of that scene. And now you're just following that and you're believing in that. But you can't do that without taking a strong and making a strong decision and really stand somewhere. We want to see characters that are standing for something, that are making a decision, whether that's an irrational, a stupid, a beautiful, a smart decision, it doesn't matter, but they are standing for something and they are defending that through their actions and through what they are saying and what behavior they are displaying. Does that make sense? Please let me know in the comment section below because truly talking about the long-term relationship with the casting director, talking about making it in movie business industry and entertainment industry, it's about leaving a mark. It's about getting recognized and remembered by the people in charge. And when you have your production meetings and your directional meetings and, and your callbacks and all that, it's all about standing out. It's all about leaving that nuance of, of what you're standing for, leaving that color, leaving that intensity, leaving that energy. Well, he decided for that. He went for that. That was wrong in my opinion, but I liked how he did it. And being coherent with your choices that you are making shows the casting director that you are really believing in your craft. And then it can be corrected afterwards, but first show them what's your decision. What does your character really, really want? How does your character feel in this very unique moment of the character's history? Fill out the blank spots because your character is coming from a place and he's going somewhere else and you have to kind of take that in. And if you take that in seriously and authentically and, and you are honest with yourself when you, you, maybe you wrote a little background story, a little bio, and you know exactly what your character went through, then as a consequence of your reasoning, of your thinking, of, of your creation, the character must act in this way and feels this way and is in this particular mood. And that you will display. Now we have sharp angles. Now we have something to work with. Now we have an enriched, interesting character that tells us something. You don't need to be likable. And if you're playing it so and so or trying to play it safe, you're not making any bold and, and irrational and strong decisions about how your character feels or where, he's come from, where he comes from and all that, then it's, it's all liquefied. It's all a muddle of emotions. It's a milieu, it's an environment that kind of stands for everything and nothing at all. It will taste bland and not really spicy. It won't deliver any deeper message, meaning, flavor or temperature and won't leave any trace. They won't remember you after you left the room if you are playing it like everybody else is playing because that's mediocre. That means also that you might risk to fail sometimes. It's, it's just the first attempt in learning. That's what failure means. Fail means first attempt in learning. Okay, that was my first attempt. Try it a second time. Okay, another failure, try it a third time. Hmm, starts to work. Fourth time, now it's perfect. There is no no. There is no, now it stops just because you failed an audition. It's just the next opportunity that will show up. But you have to make decisions and they will remember you for your decisions. The casting director looks for someone who is creative and who is in charge of his character, who knows exactly what he's doing. And the flip side of this coin means also, I can work with this person. Because if, if the casting director perceives that an actor has, has taken an active decision on how he wants to display this imagined life, there must be a logic and a reasoning and a coherent behavior behind this. So that means there is a craft behind and where the casting director assumes a, a strong and built out craft where then he assumes this is also a great person to work with because obviously this person has total control 
over its instruments and I have total control over my instrument and so in the middle we have antithesis, we have the thesis and the, we have the result. Now we're getting to a synthesis, we are getting to a result. It's like a magical process. We have two imaginary products two imaginary visions, two imaginary substances, and they're coming together and creating a new substance. And that's what acting is reacting and the chain reaction of all these emotions is actually all about. So make strong decisions to stand out in the casting director's office, to really kind of portray for what you are actually standing for as a human being, as a professional, and as the character in the scene. Thank you so much guys for sticking with us till the end. It was a great pleasure sharing these three tools with you guys. I hope you liked them. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you thought this information had any value to you, please make sure to hit the like button. It helps us tremendously to boost our content and our information shows the algorithm what's valuable to you. Also share this information with the people you love. Of course, comment in the comment section below what you thought of this. If you have anything to add, if you want to comment or if you have any wishes for the future of any other technical videos like this one, how to really manage to the craft of acting in front of the camera, of being a great and outstanding professional and having a remarkable audition game going on every time you get called to action. Also subscribe to my Instagram channel, it's the Coach MC. We got some other content there, some more artistic stuff and make sure to don't miss out on that content as well and hit the bell so you get notified every time we grind out a new video. That's all for today. I think guys, this video is completed and now you're ready to perform. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.